Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. I am really excited that you are here with me again today to listen to what I have to share with you guys. So what am I gonna talk about today? So I've been getting a lot of questions about my MCAT journey, how I studied, um, my score, and all that jazz. So in the, I'm going to do a series of videos. So this is the first of the series because I want to keep my videos short as much as I can while keeping it informative, if that makes sense. So today I'm gonna to talk about what the MCAT is, just in layman's term, when you should take the MCAT, how you should start studying, and just little introductory stuff like that. So what is the MCAT? The MCAT in layman's term is the exam that we all have to take if we want to get into a, a medical school in the US or Canada. Of course, there are always exceptions. I know that there are bridge programs that you can get straight from a US high school to college that bypass the MCAT, but that's not for the majority, right? So for the majority of us, we have to take the MCAT, right? So what exactly is included in the MCAT? It consists of four sections. It's approximately eight hours long. And if you don't get accommodation, you have to sit it all in one day. So that in itself is just brutal. <laughs> but it's something that we all have to do if we want to be a doctor, right? So the MCAT consists of four sections. The first section is mostly your general chemistry, your general physics, some organic chemistry, a little bio and biochemistry. But it's mostly general chemistry, physics and orgo. So that's the first section. The second section is called CARS, which is reading comprehension. <laughs> and it just gives you a bunch of long passages. Most of them are, well, in my opinion, they are not interesting to read. So, but they're basically trying to test your analytical skills. It, most of them are non-science as well. So they're like humanities, social issues, religion, philosophy, all those stuff. If you love to read, then you will excel in the Cars Passage. But for a lot of us who don't like to read, like myself <laughs> sometimes, um, the Cars Passage, the Cars section was probably one of my hardest sections. The third section, which is my favorite, is the biology and biochem section. It does contain some general chemistry, physics, organic chemistry, but for the bulk of the exam, it has to do with molecular biology stuff, um, biochemistry stuff, and bio, which is biology is rain. It's just so wide, um, which I'm going to sh go through the steps individually in different videos, and I will tell you guys exactly how I studied for each section. And then the fourth section. The fourth section has to deal with psychology and sociology. So if you love psychology and sociology, you will find the fourth section your strongest bit. So that's basically a synopsis of what the MCAT is. Okay, so now that I have given you the tea on what the MCAT is, the next question is when do you take the MCAT? So it varies per person. It's not a one size fit all for tackling the MCAT, but these are what I would recommend. Take the MCAT after you do all your prereqs. That will make your studying way easier and it will guarantee you a higher score. I have a list of the prereqs that I recommend taking before you take the MCAT. A lot of these overlap with what medical schools require, which is a good thing. Um, so I have general chemistry the whole year, physics for the whole year. College physics is fine. Um, you don't necessarily need 
calc based physics college physics is fine in my opinion you also need college math so with the mcat you don't get a calculator yeah a lot of people don't really know that but you don't get a calculator for the mcat the good thing is that the math is not rocket science math so it's not like calculus and all that but you do have to understand algebra it may sound easy but it's really not when you're under pressure you have to know how to transpose properly your exponents your logs you have to know all of that if you want to master especially the chem physics section on the mcat and again i'm going to go through a separate video on how i was able to improve my math skills because the chem and physics section was my one of my hardest so cars and chem physics were two of my hardest sections i also recommend biochemistry and fun fact more and more schools are requiring it in incoming years so if you are early in your um, college career and you're not ready to apply to med schools i would recommend taking biochemistry because it's going to help you a lot in the third section which is the biology and the biochemistry section i recommend molecular biology my degree was molecular biology and i'm telling you that saved my butt when i was studying for the mcat getting my degree in molecular biology helped me so much um, with the biology portion of the mcat because they're not really testing a lot of memory like memorization you have to know your memorization but they're mostly testing for your application and that's one thing i really improved on by taking molecular biology how to analyze different graphs different gels different results um my exam was a lot of that it was a lot of graphs and stuff like that so i would highly recommend some form of molecular classes um before you take the mcat and of course, you need general bio. That varies per school. A lot of med schools do require a whole year of gen bio. And more and more schools are also requiring statistics. Um, that really did help me with the biology section and the psychology section, surprisingly. I didn't know that it would have helped me with the psychology section so much. But the psychology section does have a lot of experiments and stuff like that. I personally took public health statistics, so it was really relatable to what was going on. It wasn't, it wasn't like just calculating a bunch of random numbers and stuff. So that really helped me with those two other sections as well. So some people are able to get all their prerequisites done by their junior year and when they do that, they usually start studying that winter and then they take it sometime in the summer of their junior year if they don't want to take a gap year. But that doesn't work for everybody, right? Different people have different journeys. Not everybody complete college in four years or three years. Some people take five years, six years, seven years. So it all depends on when you take all your prereqs, um, that's when you should start studying for the MCAT. So what happens after you take all your prereqs? I didn't know where to start. Like after I learned what the MCAT was, I was like, okay, where do I start? Like, well, what kind of resources do I use? And you know, how do I test myself as I go through this whole studying process. So the first thing I recommend doing is to take a practice test. By taking a practice test before you start your review, it can tell you the areas you need to work on more. Because some people prefer psychology, so they may, ha they may never have to study that much for the psychology portion. Some people are exceptional at physics and chemistry. So taking a practice test at the start will help you to see your weak areas and your strong areas. And then after you take your practice test, go through and analyze your results. Did you miss this because you did not know it or because it was a silly mistake? And after you do that, 
make a realistic plan. I cannot stress this enough. Please make a realistic plan of the days you want to study, how many hours you want to study, how long you want to take for a content review. Some people take like two to three months, depending on if you had just completed all your prereqs, then probably two to three months is sufficient for you. If you're like me that didn't take general chemistry and physics here in the US, but took it 2012, which is what, eight years ago in a whole different country, then two to three months is not ideal, right? So after you take your first practice test, make a realistic plan. I know there are sites out there that sell MCAT plans. I personally did not purchase one because I just think I know myself best. And after going through my first practice exam, I knew exactly what I needed to pay more attention to. So you're going to need maybe a week or so. Think about an ideal, an ideal and realistic plan for yourself and write it down i use google docs because it's easy for me if you want to do manual paper microsoft it doesn't really matter just write down your plan and set goals so what do you want to accomplish by this week when do you want to take your next practice test that's how you go about making your schedule there are also multiple free websites that you can make your schedule as well and after you, I, I don't like to use the term finished content review because for me, I felt like I was never finished. So, but after you get like a good chunk of content review under the belt, then start hitting those practice questions. Start doing those practice exam because that's how you're going to build your stamina. Eight hours is a really long time for an exam. I mean, I work full time and eight hours is really long and I love my job. But when I had to sit for an exam for eight hours, after two, three hours, my brain was like, Psh, oh my God, I have five hours left. How am I going to get through to this? But I did. So that works out in my favor. But yeah, after you do content review, start hitting those practice exams. And in my next video, I'm going to share with you guys how many exams I took and if I saw improvement in my exams, the type of exams I would recommend, there are some programs or businesses out there that I would not recommend their exams and I'll tell you why in my next videos as well. So yeah, this is how you should, I recommend you know, you're going about starting the whole MCAT journey. So I hope you learned something today. Please remember to like, share with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel because I want people out there to know that there are information out there. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. I didn't know where to start, but I overcame it. So I want you guys to be able to do that as well. So stay tuned for my next videos where I'm going to get into the details of each section, what I used to study and the scores I got for each section and how that was different from my practice exam and stuff like that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you soon. All right, have a good day.